Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and today is Server Maintenance Day. So I thought I'd stick on the video camera and just film this. It's something I do every couple of years or so and what you see in front of you is my web server email server and what I use this for is uh, my in-house hosting of my website ianjohnston.com and also the email for me and the rest of the family both in-house and external and this small Lenovo Think Center M920Q I use for the server itself. It's running Microsoft Windows Server plus a whole host of software that I use to manage the, all the domain names that I have and also to point those websites to the correct area on the hard drive, keep them separate etc etc. Now I do actually like to have a spare PC just in case the primary one goes down and for all these years that I've been running this server, I do actually have a spare PC. However, I just recently commandeered that for a different function, i.e. my home assistant box. And that left me without a spare. So actually, this is the spare, which I've already labelled up as server 2, the other one being server 1. And what I like to do when I buy these units is give them a good test restore an image backup of the original uh, server 1 PC onto this unit here, put it into operation and double check that it works. However this unit here is a little bit different to my server 1 unit in that the configuration of the back panel is a little bit different. Specifically this port here. This is a customizable port. You can option that when you buy them. And on my unit I've got a VGA connector and a serial port. And obviously this one doesn't have that. So what I need to do is open up this unit and change out this back panel here for the options that I've got in order to make it identical to the server one box. But first let's go over to my server cabinet and just take a little look at what I'm running right now. So there's the two existing units, the one on the left is server 1 and the one on the right, well that's my home assistant box. And off to the right you can see a couple of fibre converters there, that's uh, because the workshop is actually remote to the house, it's actually an outbuilding and I've got a feed from the house where my PF Sense box lives, my modem router out to the workshop here via two fibre links and of course I do need to convert them back to CAT5 in order to get them operational with my network switch etc. And yes, the two PCs are upside down, that's just how I installed them. And whilst we're in here I've got a 10 gig network switch, it's unmanaged at the moment and I've got a smaller 8 way 1 gig switch, that's a managed switch which I've got a configuration on in order to keep the web server on a different IP range from the rest of the LAN. Okay and here is the new module, you can see the VGA port there and there's a little circuit board off the back, that's actually a display port to VGA converter IC right in the middle there. And we've got a serial port as well. I'm not sure if there's any active electronics inside this little box here because it does have a 14 way header and all connections on it are actually used so there must be something in there. So anyway let's get the PC apart and let's fit the new card. So getting the PC apart is quite easy, there's a large screw in the back, just a single screw and that allows Ah, it's always a little bit tight. Yeah, there it goes. There it goes. I'm just sort of slide the two halves apart and the front cover comes off, revealing the insides. And down here is that existing panel which I need to remove. So there's a couple of screws to take off first. One in the back and one on the side here. And this single black screw here that holds down the card 
I just need to loosen it. It doesn't come right out, if I remember. And it's just a case of wiggling it out, and there it goes. And I can bring over the new card. First of all, get the connector in place. There it goes. And I'll put in the fixing screws. And the header for the serial cable is right down in the corner there. Now whilst we're in here, I'd just like to point out the hard drive situation that I've got. I've got uh, two drives in this unit, a drive C and a drive D effectively. This one here, this two and a half inch SATA SSD is the drive D. The drive C lives under a panel in the back here. Just a slide out panel. And there it is. That's a crucial P5 M2 SSD. Both drives are 256 gig. More than enough for a web and email server. I'll just slide it back together again. And I'll put on the lid and then I'll set up ready for the restore. Okay, so the way I'm going to restore both drive images to both the hard disks inside the PC is using a program called Image for Windows. I've been using Image for Windows for donkey's years and it's my much preferred method of backing up an image of the hard drive in order to restore it later on down the line. Now Image for Windows is a Windows app. You just install it like any other app on your PC and then without having to put the PC or Windows into any mode or anything like that, you just run the program and back up an image of the partition or drive that you select and that will save it down to a single file which you can then copy off the PC and store away elsewhere. So I've got both the images for drive C and drive D just put onto this external USB SSD and I can plug this into the PC and restore from here onto the drives within the unit. However, you don't need to install Windows. You can do this with completely blank drives within the PC itself. And the way you do that is using a bootable USB stick. And there's a copy of Image for DOS on here. It's the sister product to Image for Windows and it comes with it. And basically you create this bootable Image for DOS USB stick, put it in the unit, boot to the USB stick and that will bring up Image for DOS on here and then you can restore from the image onto the hard drives. So let's get started with that now. So there's a USB slot on the front of the unit so I'll just use that for the uh, image for DOS and I'll plug in the external drive with the images on it round the back of the PC. There we go. And then all I need to do now is power up the PC and boot to that stick. Okay so let's power on and hit F12 until I get the boot menu for the BIOS up on the screen. Have we got Lenovo there we go, got the boot screen. And you've got a bunch of drives here. You've got the internal drive C, the internal drive D, because I recognise the numbers there. And you've got network stuff, I can ignore that. And down at the bottom there, we've got the USB stick on the front. That's image for DOS, I know that, for the 1.11. And the drive, the external 2.5 inch drive with my images on it, that's the 02041 there. So I'll select that one there to boot from, hit the button, and it should boot up Image for DOS. And there we go, straight into it. Now Image for DOS is a standalone app. If you want it to be, you can back up and restore from it if you don't want to use the Windows version, Image for Windows, on the actual operating system itself. But in this case, I'm just going to choose Restore and Normal File Direct BIOS Direct Now it's asking me which drive do I want to restore from? Well that's going to be 
this WD Blue drive here, and I'm to tell you the truth, I'm not sure whether it's drive 0, drive 1 or drive 3. It's, it's definitely not this Samsung SSD 870 because that's the internal drive in there. So let's give it a shot with the first one and see what happens. And no, I think that's image for DOS one on the front. That'll be the drive 0. So I need to go back, try drive 1. I don't think it's that one either. So it must be drive 3. Yep, stuff. That is the name I've given to that external drive. So it's definitely this one. And now we can select the actual image files itself. You can see that's when I uh, backed it up before on the 21st of September 2025 for drive C and drive D. So I want to restore the drive C one first, this big 28 gigabyte file. So we'll go down and select that one there. And it's asking me whether I want to do the entire drive including the MBR etc etc. Well just leave them ticked by default and down onto next and I want BIOS direct and now I want to select the target drive. I reckon it's drive 1 because drive 0 is marked USB, drive 3 is marked as USB and it's not a Samsung SSD that's used for the drive C so it must be drive 1. And it's confirming to me the size of that drive, the existing drive and yes 250 gigs it's definitely that one. Now on here you've got a bunch of options regarding the restore. The only one that I need to check is the scale to target which is down here. There we go. Next. Ready to start. And off it goes. And here is the progress bar. It takes quite a bit of time. I think if I remember rightly about 20 minutes something like that to restore the entire image from that 30 gig file onto the actual drive C in the unit. Now one thing I'd like to mention is that yes we've got image for Windows, we've got image for DOS but it also comes with image for Linux and you can run that off a bootable uh, CD or a USB stick and sometimes that's a good alternative for image for DOS. You can use the bootable image for Linux to back up and restore the Windows partitions. And sometimes that's necessary because actually it depends on your keyboard. Because sometimes when running image for DOS it can stop a USB keyboard from working. And I've found that once or twice with other PCs. Doesn't seem to happen with the Lenovo's but I have had to use the image for Linux uh, when that does happen. So I'll come back when this is finished. And well there we go that's drive C completed successfully. So now I just need to go back in again and do the same again for the drive D. But I won't bore you with that. Let me just come back when it's completed. And there we go that's the restore for the drive D completed successfully. Now I did actually need to repeat the drive D because it failed the first time around on that scale to target. Because both drives are 250 gig, perhaps it felt it couldn't uh, restore that uh, with a scale to target. So I just unchecked that box, reran it, and now it's completed successfully. And so the next thing to do is just exit here, turn off the PC, just for holding the button, and disconnect my two drives. And I should be able to boot it up now and have a successful uh, boot into the Windows server and both drives should appear perfectly. But first of all I'll just plug in a mouse onto the front of the unit and power up. And yep yeah, looks like the drive C is okay we're getting the boot logo for the Windows server. And there we go that's been booted straight into that restored image there. Perfect. Of course I don't have a network cable attached at the moment. I'll do that later after I've finished up this video. 
So that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you how I restore um, images that I've got on file. Uh, if I've got a server that goes down and either the drive C or the drive D and how quick it is to actually restore. Um, that took about half an hour, about 15 minutes for each drive and it's up and running there. And in practice when I've done this all I need to do is switch off server 1, take this PC, go straight over uh, into the server cabinet and plug this one in. And for users on the system, because of course this is a mail server as well, it will only be the mail up to the point where I did that backup. But generally what ha seems to happen is the user's email client on their own PCs will sync back to the server as well. So there's no problem. So I'll go off now and I'll uh, make the modifications and testing that I wanted to do on the server too in the cabinet. I won't show you that. But anyway, thanks for watching and remember you can always comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. Thanks for watching.